It has been a very busy few days for power crews trying to work as hard as they can to make sure people don't spend another night in the dark. Thanks for staying with us at six. We know it is a very stressful time for so many of you, and we're here to answer all the questions that you might have. Our team coverage tonight starts with a look at the latest on the outages. Here are up to the minute numbers from Appalachian Power. Take a look. Lynchburg still has around 25,000 customers without electricity. The numbers in Campbell County have gone down significantly now, right around 7,000 out of power there. Roanoke has about 23,000 customers out. Amherst County, right around 10,000, and Bedford County still has a little more than 15,000 customers in the dark. A crew supervisor with Appalachian Power tells us in his 35-year career, this is one of the worst outages he's ever worked to fix. And the temperature, of course, makes getting that job done that much more difficult. Crews have to rotate and take breaks to prevent heat exhaustion. Mark Kelly caught up with crews in Lynchburg and joins us now live. And Mark, well, this is just a massive amount of work for them. It really is, Noreen, and crews really had to prioritize in order to get it all done. Today, one of those priorities was getting Virginia Baptist Hospital off of its generator and back on the power grid. And we just learned this evening at 5 o'clock, they did. Getting Boonesboro lit up again is like putting a 1,000 piece puzzle together. It's tiresome and tedious. For example, that right there comes out of Rivermont. Yeah. This over here comes out of Peking Station. Yeah. So it's all pieced together and what we'll do is put it, put it on in pieces. Tommy Bondurant with Appalachian Power has his crews working Rivermont Avenue, one of the worst hit areas. The destruction looks never ending. Fortunately, the help is never ending too. Would AEP be able to get it done without some outside help? Uh, no, no, we, we need our resources outside help. This power company drove in from Tennessee to lend a hand, and more are expected from as far away as Texas. But power is just one problem for Ann Farrell. The larger concern, the big tree that fell on her mother's house. Oh, we were flabbergasted. I mean, this is her home. Friday, the tree landed just feet away from Farrell's 87-year-old mother, fast asleep in her room. How do you sleep right through? That's what we want to know. The storm's passed. Now everyone's picking up the pieces and starting over. So when will we all be plugged in again? AEP is focused on one job at a time. I hate to make predictions. Officials held a media briefing this afternoon to update us on the storm cleanup. Representatives from Appalachian Power say all residents should be back up and running by this coming weekend. Officials want everyone to know there are two main shelters still up and running. Sandusky Middle School has food and drinks for those who need it, and Thomas Road Baptist Church has an overnight facility capable of housing 600 people. And I think it's appropriate that we all recognize that this community has just responded uh, uh, amazingly. Uh, you know, it's, it's our job as city employees to be, to be responsive. Uh, it's uh, certainly part of the, the ministry of Thomas Road um, to be responsive to neighbors in need, but neighbors who are helping neighbors is even more gratifying in this community. A lot of people are having a hard time finding what they need to help them get through this power outage. Stores are running out of everything from chainsaws to battery powered fans, pretty much you name it. Sally Delta went out to see how folks are managing. Sadly, obviously things could be much better. How are they doing? Lynn, a lot of people are staying upbeat about staying upbeat, but quite a few people I talked to are at their wits end. This shortage of gasoline and ice is simply too much for some to handle. It's the same story from Madison Heights to Lynchburg and beyond. There are the quiet gas stations and then there are these. It has been chaotic. It's been hard. I mean, we've been traveling from one side of town to the next, you know, the other side of town. Um, a lot of places had sold out of gas. So there's not much gas, but something else is in even higher demand. The main thing on your list is ice. Ice. And we need ice. But ice is very hard to find. Every, everybody went crazy and just ice went quick. As soon as the Kroger gas station on Timberlake stocked up, it was gone. It is sold out with less than an hour. And if you're one of those looking for ice, you're not going to find it here at the Shell Station on Timberlake. They ran out Sunday night and say they aren't sure when they're going to get another shipment. Deronda Prettyman says ice is essential in saving any of the food she has left. She says she can't afford for it to all go bad. I mean, you know, that's a lot of money down a drain, especially for folks that ain't got a lot of money. But Prettyman and many others are trying to keep their cool in this very sticky situation. We need the power back on. So we're very stressed out. I think everybody is at this point. So we just all need to pray for everybody. And there's also a shortage of generators. Lowe's, True Value, and Sears are all out of them, and none 
know or sure when the shipment will come in. Now, as far as ice, TRBC has 1,000 bags left and say they'll be handing those out for free until they're gone or until dark, whichever comes first. Live in Lynchburg Newsroom, Sally Delta, ABC 13 News. Thank you, Sally. TRBC really stepping up to help. Your best resource for anything you need to know about this storm is WSET.com. We have a list of the cooling centers out there that are open. We're also listing places that have been offering free meals, showers, ice, generators, you name it again. WSET.com. Unfortunately, we do not have any better news to tell you about with the weather. It got well up into the 90s today and is going to stay that way the rest of the week. Let's head over to Chief Meteorologist Sean Sublett. Hey, Sean. Hey there, Noreen. The only one positive thing we could kind of take from all that is there not going to be any real damaging kinds of thunderstorms for tonight. In fact, the atmosphere a lot quieter overall than any of the past three nights. However, having said that, it means it's going to take longer to cool off tonight. Still running 91 outside in Lynchburg and 84 heading out towards the beaches. You're looking at temperatures holding in the low 90s the next couple of hours for cooling to near 70 by first thing tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about the thunderstorm chances these next couple of days in just a few minutes. Len. Thank you, Sean. Of course, one of the bigger concerns in the aftermath of this storm has been the welfare of the patients at area hospitals. Centra CEO Michael Bryant joins us now <laughs> with the latest conditions on Lynchburg General and Virginia Baptist. Now, Lynchburg General, um, a lot of people haven't been seeing the news. <laughs> this may be their first time since their power gate on. So <laughs> what happened there? Oh, Lynchburg General, uh, we got our power back Saturday night and today uh, was basically normal. And, uh, and again, as you announced earlier, we're so thrilled that at yes. 5 o'clock today, Virginia Baptist is back. So tomorrow, all scheduled uh, surgeries, endoscopies, all cases scheduled for Virginia Baptist tomorrow will, be, will go on as scheduled. And for those that we had to reschedule today, we'll be in, in communication again to see if we can get to them as soon as uh, we can arrange their schedule. I imagine a huge thank you goes out to APCO for getting Baptist back online. Well, APCO, I understand uh, our uh, staff at Virginia Baptist was doing a little song, it was doing a little dance as they <laughs> were going up the pole to turn on the switch. So, uh, so we're very excited. And also, uh, again, uh, we want to thank uh, uh, Thomas Road Baptist Church and uh, Dr. Matt Johnson from our staff is helping to coordinate a team of medical professionals there. So I would encourage everyone, uh, if they feel like they need any medical treatment or cooling shelter, please go there. And uh, at least for the next 24 hours, that's taken a lot of pressure off our ED right now and I encourage everyone to take advantage of that. Of course, you want major medical major emergencies to, major come to, our to ED, go to the hospital to the but, emergency uh, room. But we're seeing 300 to 400 patients a day right now. Wow. None of them, uh, no heat intense uh, issues at this point, but a lot's coming through. So uh, if, if they feel comfortable enough to go to that medical treatment center at, at Thomas Rhodes, that would be a, a big relief. And we have full medical uh, professionals there to help us. Oh, so it's no joke. I mean, that's that's full it's service. Full I mean, service. Yeah, so, wonderful. It's well, great to have you. that. And again, congratulations. Glad your power is oh, back oh, on. Thank you. I'm so close to the hospital. I was crossing my fingers. Yeah. I'd be in their grid. No we really, luck. We really Feel free to come spend the night. At the hospital. <laughs> if you have a bed, I just might. Thank you so well, thank much you. for joining us. Oh, a local senior living facility is helping the elderly stay cool. Runk and Pratt Senior Living Community has opened its facilities in Forest and Lynchburg. They tell us they have about 15 people from the Red Cross and Centra Hospital taking refuge there. Some Runk and Pratt residents are even sharing their rooms with those in need. Everybody helping out. Worth repeating, keep an eye on your elderly neighbors. Some may be stubborn, but you know, it could be best to advise them to seek shelter. Because they become so dehydrated so easily and so many things can happen after dehydration sets in, we really strongly urge everybody to seek help. And when there's a hand extended to go ahead and help, let them help you. Runkin Pratt says they have about three beds yet available. They're also in need of volunteers to come sit with the elderly or assist them with other duties. So give them a call if you'd like to help out. We have much more for you at WSAT.com. A big question this evening in a lot of people's minds is how safe is the drinking water with the power outages? Well, yesterday, Vinton issued a water boil alert for a few areas there. In Lynchburg, full power has been restored to both the water treatment plants as well as the wastewater treatment plant. Officials say the drinking water is completely safe and was never an issue. Dominique Ricks is live outside our Lynchburg studio. Dominique, the wastewater plant lost power Friday night. Although it's back on, there were some problems. That water line had solids in it, and officials say to avoid direct contact with the James River, if at all possible. Basically for 12, a little over 12 hours, we were discharging wastewater that was only receiving chlorination. At this point, it looks like about two and a half million gallons of, of wastewater. That's what now coats the James River. We would advise people to avoid primary contact in the river, 
uh, downstream of Lynchburg for a couple miles. For the James River Flow Company, their business is the river. We've also recommended that they do not have uh, people that have, they're in primary contact with the river at this point. The city says they advised the company of the river dangers, yet when we stopped by, they were open for business. Can you comment on anything about wastewater being in the James River? No, I don't think I'll comment on that. Or how it affects business? No, no. I'm sorry. What can you tell us, Bryce? Um, it's hot outside, power's out in a lot of places. Is there a reason why you can't talk about uh, the wastewater in the James River? Just uh, want to keep shedding positive light here. We wanted to know if they were sending people into the river or at least issuing warnings, but our questions went unanswered. When we asked management to contact us, we never heard back. As for the river, DEQ, the State Department of Emergency Management, and Health Department have all been notified, but it may be too late. There's some gray water in the river, as well as a, a few um, fish that we found that were dead. And Tim Mitchell says it should be okay to be in direct contact with the water in the river in about a day or so. I'm also told that city officials will be out at the river tomorrow to do another inspection. Right now, the wastewater is receiving full treatment. Reporting live in Lynchburg, Dominique Ricks, ABC 13 News. Thanks, Dominique. With so many traffic lights out around our region, public safety at these intersections is a very big concern. Lynchburg police are reminding you to need to treat intersections without working traffic lights as four-way stops, with the driver on the right having the right of way. Police say as of yesterday, at least 60 intersections were not working in Lynchburg alone. Today, crews are making progress to reduce that number. The police chief says they're too short staffed, though, to direct traffic at knocked out intersections. So it is up to you to follow the rules of the road. The traffic laws have not been uh, been put on hold in the city of Lynchburg. We are enforcing traffic laws. And again, uh, the main issue is to just use that kind of common sense. Now, listen, people who don't stop at the intersections where the power is cut off can be charged with reckless driving. And something, I have seen so yeah. many people flying past me, honking at me when I stop. They I just, just don't say, get it. Something I've seen as well out there. Please be careful. Slow down. Just, just look around. The last thing many of you want right now is another round of storms, but it could be an active night. Yeah, Sean has the latest on those and the heat after the break. Although no thunderstorm in Lynchburg City itself last night, there was a much more active time south and southwestward from the city limits. This photo was sent in last night late by Chris Runk. This is out at Smith Mountain Lake, and you can see the lake water here in the foreground and the lightning strikes and the more uh, municipal, uh, municipalities here out of the four into the uh, background. Some very good lightning shows down southward from the city of Lynchburg, and we did have severe thunderstorms in a couple locations uh, heading south and westward from Lynchburg earlier on uh, yesterday evening as late as two or, or one or two into the morning. Now regarding tonight, it's a much less active time, especially for Lynchburg and heading west. A couple smaller showers out there. One we talked about earlier, diving southward between Brook Neal and Charlotte Courthouse into Charlotte County makes a run of clover, but this hardly enough to even get the ground wet. A few more relatively heavier uh, showers. A couple of lightning strikes coming out of uh, Buckingham County down toward Farmville, Prince Edward County, and some of these kind of back building, if you will, through Nelson and Amherst counties. But you don't see anything that's really jumping up, getting rapidly stronger. That's why we don't think there's a, a massive severe weather threat out there for tonight, despite the heat that's out there, as it has been a tiny bit less humid than the last two or three days. 93 still out for Roanoke. We run 91 into Lynchburg and 92 into both Danville, uh, excuse me, into Danville and Charlottesville. 80 is now beginning to show up farther westward into the mountains. Now we do see the chances for the showers and storms returning, and it's still going to be quite hot. Now up at the jet stream level, there's a core of the heat, which is actually retreated a little bit back off toward the southwest. There's a little area of low pressure riding along the jet here and it's already spawning these thunderstorms uh, across St. Louis and into southern Illinois and Indiana. That's going to ride toward us as we hit the next couple of days. And as long as ours, all this big heat out across the plains, it's going to be some time before it begins to cool off here as well. So again, not a big thunderstorm threat for tonight or, or tomorrow morning for that matter, but we will have a regeneration of the showers and storms for tomorrow afternoon. Again, tonight partly cloudy, some isolated storms out there generally eastward from Lynchburg. Low temperatures into the upper 60s. For Central Virginia tomorrow, mostly sunny, small scattering of thunderstorms late in the day, high 96 in the Lynchburg, Bedford and Amherst. South side Virginia to the upper 90s. Again, mostly sunny. The isolated shower storm taking hold late in the day, but we still see it around 99 
mid south Boston. Into the mountains, we're into the low and mid 90s. Sunshine, some scattered clouds, and a few scattered thunderstorms taking hold later on into the afternoon. Best chance all week to get showers and thunderstorms actually comes on Wednesday. Then those chances come down leading into the weekend, but high temperatures are going to be consistently well.